In this video, we discuss VMware switching for UC on UCS. In UC on UCS, Benefits and Technologies Part 2, we discussed how in today's model, servers running specific apps are connected to switch ports. We know which applications are connected to which switch ports and all the switching is done in the switches. None of it is done in the servers. In a VMware environment, ESXi servers host multiple VMs and there are ESXi V switches deployed inside the servers. We now have switching done both inside and outside of the servers. We need to understand how this works. Let's start with basic vSwitch concepts. Here we have a switch, a Catalyst or Nexus switch, or any other kind of switch for that matter. A server running ESXi is connected to the switch. The ESXi server has two Ethernet ports, which we call server uplinks. Inside the ESXi server is a vSwitch. The vSwitch also has uplinks, which we call VM NICs. The VM NICs are connected to the ESXi server uplinks. Inside the ESXi server, we have our virtualized UC apps running as virtual machines or VMs. The VMs have their own uplinks called vNICs. VMs are attached to vSwitches via port groups configured on the vSwitch. Each vNIC is configured as belonging to a port group. There are two different kinds of port groups. VM port groups are used to attach VMs to vSwitches, and VM kernel port groups are used for VMware related traffic such as for VMware management, vMotion, and IP storage. Port groups have a small number of attributes. When you configure a port group, you can specify a VLAN or configure the port group for trunking. You can configure security, traffic shaping, and NIC teaming policies. For UC on UCS, we are mostly concerned with the VLAN and NIC teaming policies. Two fundamental things to remember. A VNIC is connected to a single port group, and a port group can have multiple VMs attached to it. Let's talk about basic VMware switching. Here we have an ESXi server with four uplinks. Inside the server, we'll deploy two separate vSwitches, which we'll call vSwitch0 and vSwitch1. vSwitch0 will have two uplinks, or VM NICs, and vSwitch1 will have none. On vSwitch0, we'll configure two port groups, one for VMs in VLAN 100 and one for VMs in VLAN 200. We'll deploy three VMs. The vNICs on the first two will be attached to the port group configured for VLAN 100 and the third to the port group configured for VLAN 200. The most important consideration when looking at vSwitch switching is that we want no spanning tree. We do not want to process BDPUs and have ports shut down removing bandwidth from the environment. If we don't have spanning tree, then what can't we have? We can't have any loops. Let's look at vSwitch characteristics and operations that prevent this. Only one VM NIC can connect to any server uplink, so this is not allowed. A VM NIC can be connected to only one server uplink, so this is not allowed. If we connect each of the vSwitch 0 VM NICs to its own server uplink, we have a good configuration. V-switches cannot be connected together, so this is not allowed. V-switches do not need to have uplinks. A VM can be connected to two V-switches. This is allowed, but why would we want to do it? In this picture, VM4 might be a firewall, and other VMs connected to switch 1, not shown here, could be placed behind the firewall. We won't do this for UC on UCS, but it's good to know. vSwitches do not learn MAC addresses on uplinks. vSwitches will learn or know all the MAC addresses for the VMs attached to them, but will not learn MAC addresses for external devices. vSwitches switch frames between VMs in the same VLAN. 
While this is normally a good thing, in some cases network administrators like to put policies on switch ports in the same VLAN to control what traffic is switched between devices on that VLAN. Unfortunately, we cannot do this in a VMware switch. This is a motivation for deploying the Nexus 1000V, which we'll discuss later in another whiteboard drawing. We can't switch a frame from a VNIC in one VLAN to a VNIC in another. These switches can be used to isolate traffic. We'll use this approach for UC on UCS to isolate our UC traffic from our VM management traffic. We'll put all our UC VMs on one vSwitch in different VLANs if desired, while our VM kernel traffic, management, vMotion, and IP storage is switched in a separate vSwitch with separate uplinks. Let's finish with some simple things about uplinks. Frames received on uplinks will never be forwarded out other uplinks. We'll also do deja vu checking. We'll block frames inbound from one of our own MAC addresses. And finally, on a vSwitch, broadcasts will only be accepted on one uplink. Now we'll have a look at NIC teaming, which we use for redundancy and load balancing. For this, we'll draw a simple network with a switch, an ESXi server with two uplinks, and a vSwitch with two VM NICs. We'll deploy four VMs. The ESXi server uplinks will be connected to the switch. The vSwitch VM NICs will be connected to the ESXi server uplinks. The VM vNICs will be connected to a port group on the vSwitch. The two simplest options for NIC teaming are vPort ID based and MAC address hash. Since UC on UCS VMs have only vNIC, this results in basically the same thing. Traffic from a particular VM is pinned to a specific uplink. Question. Does anything have to be configured on the upstream switch for traffic to flow properly? No, nothing needs to be configured. The switch will see all of the traffic from a particular VM on a single switch port and will direct traffic back to that VM on that same port. How does this work? Let's say that VM1 has MAC address A. Traffic from this VM is pinned to the left server uplink and shows up on the switch port on the left. The switch learns that A is on that port. Similarly, if VM4 has MAC address B, then because traffic from this VM is pinned to the right server uplink, it shows up on the switch port on the right. The switch learns that B is on that port. The switch will direct traffic to A to the left port and traffic to B to the right port without any special configuration. We'll use vPort ID load balancing on B switches configured on UCS B series blades. The other form of NIC teaming is IP hash. With this approach, traffic flows from individual VMs are hashed onto the server uplinks based on the source and destination addresses. This means traffic from each VM can be distributed across all of the uplinks. Question. Does anything have to be configured on the upstream switch for traffic to flow properly? Yes. The upstream switch sees traffic from the same MAC addresses on both ports connected to the ESXi server. This behavior is only okay if we have a port channel or VPC configured on the upstream switch. IP hash teaming is not suitable for blade servers. It is great for C-series. We'll talk about this when we look at switching in a later whiteboard drawing. Thanks for watching.